Welcome everybody, David Gross with Condi Systems back with you to share a little bit of our recipe for sublimation success and of course transfer success as well. Today it's my honor to have back with us the one and only Craig Mertens. Craig, how are you? I am wonderful. How's your Monday going there, David? Well, I didn't didn't remember we were going to get together today until um, I got up early and I looked at Google and it it shared with me what we were going to do. Um, yeah, I, I, you know what? We have so many meetings these days that it's just hard to keep track of them all. It's nuts. I put a reminder on my phone, on my computer, and then I started using my smartwatch just so I could keep track of them all. It's just crazy. Um, thanks for having me on today. I'm really excited. It's a topic that um, I really enjoy talking about, and, and I think it's a really good business opportunity for a lot of our shared customers. So. I'm kind of excited so let's, to get, let's talk get about it. why we do this. It's very simple. Um, we need to educate our clients. We need to help them be mm -hmm. successful. And there is no one person or company that has all the answers because the answers, of course, as you know, what happens? They keep changing. Yeah, they do. So uh, looking at opportunities that are with us, that are all around us, and, of course, today we're going to talk about selling into the graduation market. And of course, the way I look at this, there's really three elements to success, as we've talked about before. Number one is the stuff we do at the computer. Number two, it's the decorating process itself. And then number three is our sales and marketing. And of course, I think it's very easy to teach people the decorating process, but when it comes to artwork, when it comes to sales and marketing, that's where we need to continually up our game to do better. And so, Craig, take it over. Share with oh. us uh, how we can be successful for graduating, uh, for graduates during this, this in-between time as we're moving out of the pandemic into normalized. What are the opportunities? Super. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked. You know, it was, it was fascinating a year ago, exactly this time of the year, I was talking to a good customer, shared customer of ours, David, and um, he, he was graduated. He was a photographer. And every year they have a sublimation system. They put together a gift line. And every year during graduation season, they come out with their line. And um, but it's all it was kind of spun off from the senior photos. And um, he wasn't shooting. He's in New York City. He wasn't shooting senior photos last year. And it really I mean, it really had a devastating effect on his business. And I talked to him. I said, hey, listen, you know, what, it, you know, I know you guys are in a, in a you know, downtown environment, but do you guys by any chance, did you see like all the signs sticking in people's front yards and things like that? And he says, well, they don't put them in people's front yards here. What they do is they put those senior class graduation signs. They hang them from the stoop and they hang them from the overhang over their front door. And they, you know, sometimes you see them with signs. And I said, yeah. I said that to me, that's the, that was the ticket last year to kind of some level of sales continuity during some unprecedented times where people weren't gathering for graduations. And, and depending upon where you live, we know it's different in every, every part of the United States. There, this year, there's going to be different levels of, of you know, participation in in-person graduation. Some states, you won't see any in-person graduation at all. It'll still be virtual. Other states, you'll see kind of a hybrid thing. Some schools are doing it in their parking lots with the drive-through, and some schools just went for it. <laughs> you know, so it just depends on where you live. And so as a result of that, um, you know, trying to tailor the products to the the market conditions is actually really, really important. And one of the things that that, you know, you know, that I, you know, I was pointed out to me by some pretty smart people was that, hey, listen, you know, you guys are kind of coming into the graduation thing kind of late um, for, for uh, 2021. And I'm like, uh, no, where does early for 2022? You know, people start the merchandising for senior shirts and for graduation where immediately, immediately upon back to school. Um, 
you know, you should be engaged in that, getting people talking about that literally right now for next year, for July. Um, if you had driven, at least in my community in Arizona, I bike every weekend and, you know, I'm very kind of self-aware of all these <laughs> signs everywhere. And so in my, in my community, what you see is you see 18 by 24 Coroplast signs on step stakes in people's front yard that said, congratulations, Coronado Senior. We see um, uh, banners hanging from the front porch, usually two foot by three foot banners that say, you know, congratulations, Sabercat Senior. Um, we see um, banners, some quite large horizontal banners and, you know, two by sixes with the same thing. But we started seeing these last year. We saw these in September. That's when people are doing the purchasing for these kind of products. So it's something, if you get a jump start on it, it's something you can, you can actually capitalize on throughout yeah, the year. And, and so, I would also say, Craig, that, that even at this late date, you've got great opportunities to sell gifts into Absolutely. the graduation market. Agreed. Everything it's, it's, from uh, drinkware yeah. to a garden flag, uh, interior, like uh, decorating a, a picture frame. Um, you've got just tremendous number of products to present to your clients. Um, we were talking before the broadcast about our new mm -hmm. textured metal that you can write on with chalk. Um, how great is that, you know? Yeah, it's not too. It's certainly not too late for this year. But you, but my kind of my point was, you want to get the jump on next year. You want to be that person that's the go-to person for that. And we we talk about talk to clients that they put together a whole program. And folks that have e-commerce and the ability to sell via e-commerce, it's a perfect type of an e-commerce product because you can set up a store for the school, and the and the young person can or their family can go in and you know pick their T-shirt or pick their photo frame or pick their banner or whatever they're doing. So. Um, in order for these things to occur, in order for us to create the market opportunity, what you have to have is graphics that tailor into that market opportunity. And that was the one thing we kind of took a deep, hard look. I'm going to turn my my uh, monitor on, and I'm going to I'm gonna actually going to share my screen here. And so we're going to share the screen, and then I'm going to turn my mug off. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that. Mute, stop video. All right, so you, you should be just seeing full screen right now. Yeah. So, so we were, <laughs> we're like, we took a look at our inventory of designs. And we had some things that would kind of work for this whole graduation thing, but um, we have a whole new design team. We hired a new design team. We have our 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 in-house domestic design team that's quite talented. Um, our company is, you know, for most people know us as Digital Art Solutions. Our company was recently uh, renamed Graphics Flow to correspond with our new graphics flow technology. But we have our in-house art team. And on this project, we decided to actually use our freelance team. And we have a freelance team that we use that does, they do work for Cabela's, Bass Pro, Cirque du Soleil, Graceland, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Fanatics, Nordstrom, Disney, Universal Studios. They're a graphic design team that does the graphics for these big retail entities. And they're very talented. And we, we, we had kind of planted the seeds last year of maybe doing something like this when I talked to my, my customer, Conrad, and it kind of, you know, sat in the back of my head and I said, you know, let, let's do this. And we kind of put the idea together on March 1. I said, but let's not use our standard team. Let's use our, our new team to do the graphics. And so we storyboarded out a product that we felt would deliver all the necessities that you would need to sell into this marketplace. And we made it a continuation of, of our very well-known graphics builder kit. It's a digital kit. It provides all the artwork, uh, the templates, the clip art, the fonts, the designs, and even this little marketing toolkit. So what you guys are seeing right here is you're seeing a digital catalog that can be embedded into your website so that you could have your customers go through this. And you're not going to see any branding of graphics flow or digital art solutions anywhere on this. This is this is for you to use as a self-promotion. And you could certainly go in and at, you know embed this into your social media. Here's the sharing link. Um, you can embed it into an email, into a Facebook post, really anything you want. Could you and could you send it, Craig, could you send it as a text message and open it on your phone? Yeah, they look real cool on your phone because this technology is all mobile friendly. So these look surprisingly cool on the phone and and you know, people ask me all this, it's like, Craig, why are these load so fast on my phone? I don't get it. Like they're really high resolution images. Here's why they load fast. They're vector-based images and the rendering tools of your, your phone 
can render vector-based images if you have any kind of a reader software. And so these, these programs, in this case, you, I'm looking at it as a web browser, but watch how quickly it renders. If I go from page to page, it renders really quickly. And why is that? Because the software that's displaying these books is pre-fetching your pages into memory. As soon as you open page one, it's already fetched the rest of the pages in the catalog. So I can go very quickly through them. And so we, we created this kit. And so we had to kind of sit down. We're like, okay, well, what, what are the things that we want to be able to print on? And we're like, well, we knew one of the most popular things is a, you know, yard sign, right? So 18 by 24 is kind of a standard um, dimension for a Coroplast yard sign. If you know what Coroplast is, it's the kind of corrugated uh, plastic kind of emulates cardboard, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, equivalent would be like a garden flag. Which is yeah. 18. Exactly. Perfect. Garden flag. And the, the other, you know, and also the Unisub printable products. Um, yes. We also knew t-shirts were going to be a big thing. We also knew, you think about drinkware and mugs and, you know, the hydration category, as I like to call it now, very upscale. Um, another great opportunity, but also photo printing. And, you know, photo, here's here's the, the, the rub on photo printing and then the benefit of photo printing. If you're going to incorporate photos, you know, you have to have the photos. You're going to have to have access to a photo, which means you have to grab all those photos. It's not real hard to do, but does add a, a level of complexity to the art production process. But you can, but the good news, David can back me on this. You can charge a premium for that. If you want a personalized kid's photo in there, you can charge a premium for that. That's not going to be the same price you're going to get for just a static graphic. What, what's your thoughts on that, David? I think it's true. I think you can have an upscale, upsell model um, where you can, for instance, do single, double-sided, um, add personalization, yep. things like that. So uh, the sky's the limit. Yeah, so let me kind of walk you through some of the, the concepts we did. And one of the ways that we want you thinking of this is we want you thinking of this as a series or a collection. And so, you know, you can create a package. Like your package could be um, it could be a garden flag. We'll show you what a garden flag looks like in a little bit. It could be a, a vaporware t-shirt, could be a mug, could be even, you know, something as simple as an air freshener that hangs from grandma and grandpa's, um, you know, mirror on the front of their car. So you put together a group of products and you give the customer the option of buying it as a collection with a discount if they buy the entire bundle or buying them individually. And, you know, when, when you're looking at the target market, like who's actually buying these products, let's, let's talk about that for a second. So there's no doubt it's the parents, right? So the parents are buying the product, but you know who else is quite proud of that senior is the grandparents. So your main target market is going to be the parents and the grandparents. Then you also have the market for the quote senior shirt, which is the shirt that is worn by the graduates themselves. And, and by the way, this doesn't have to apply just to graduates because you can change seniors to freshmen, sophomore, juniors, change it to anything you want. Uh, I suppose if you wanted to do a kindergarten graduation, <laughs> you could do that as well. So um, that's quite interesting. My daughter is a, was taught kindergarten last, two years ago and she's fifth grade this year. She likes fifth grade quite a bit better, um, but doesn't mean she doesn't love kindergartners but herding cats, right? Um, so the, the, you have that aspect of it as well, but you can see kind of a co cohesive um, set of products that all have similar graphic elements with them. They're just spread out across different formats. So like you can see class pride here and here and the date down here versus just a typical senior shirt. Birch is one, that, one that's more of like a banner. And, um, and so I, I'm a, I'll show you how to physically go in and manipulate these graphics is, is quite easy. What we did with this particular product, and this is true of all of our graphics products, you will have the files that are set up natively for CorelDRAW, Mac or Windows, and then you will also have the files that are set up natively for Adobe Illustrator. And one of the big questions that people always ask is, well, can't you have these files work when these consumer level programs? And you know, you know, the answer to that question is, if, in my opinion, if you're gonna be serious about doing graphics, um, you need to have a professional level graphics program. And that professional level graphics program is either going to be CorelDRAW in the vector you know, world of vector programs. It's either going to be CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator. Um, in the photo world, it's going to be either Photoshop or Corel Photo Paint or, you know, there's, there's quite a few other choices in the photo side of things. So why CorelDRAW, why Illustrator? Because they support these functionalities that are kind of more sophisticated functions. Um, for creating text effects, for creating other visual effects, for creating masks, 
for uh, masking off photos, things of that nature. And these are functions that you don't see like in an online software like the Sawgrass. Um, software doesn't give you as much flexibility in terms of doing that or in a consumer level program or like Cameo Silhouette Design or something like that. So we got to have some kind of some, some big guns behind us graphically to be able to do some of the effects and things that you're going to see in the graphics. And one of the things that we challenged the design team to do is we didn't want to just do school colors and mascots. We wanted to do some things like, you know, this is kind of a, a you know, David and I are old, we're old guys. So that's very retro 19. That's actually 19 kind of sixties ish um, kind Ooh. of a look there, okay. um, which we like stuff like that. <laughs> and so we did a couple of retro themes in here um, and a little bit more progressive kind of up to speed, modern, themes as well. So depending upon, you know, what you're looking for, whether you're going school colors or something more thematic, you just have a huge, you know, I, I really like this one. It's got a really nice kind of a little more of a scripty kind of a feel to it, but somebody else might something want something that's a little bit more classic and upscale. And it just depends on the school and the audience. And the neat thing is they have choices so they can go in and literally have limitless, cho limitless choices for picking out the look. I actually really like this one a lot too. I did this when we put the photo in here. We just kind of broke it apart and, and dropped a photo in here, which is, you know, you always have the latitude of doing that. So our goal was to create a kit so that you could get these ideas in front of your clients in the form of this interactive catalog and social media. And I'll show you another way to do it in a second um, and go through and, um, you know, localize these files for the specific um, user and boom, you've got a finished design. And so, let me kind of show you the design process and what we would do to, to localize one of these designs. And we'll, we'll kind of create a, maybe we'll call it a little bit of a fictitious um, example of this. And we'll, we'll create a t-shirt layout and then we'll do a corresponding photo template to go with it. So couple, couple different things. When, when people invest in this product, which is called Graphics Builder Graduation Edition, when they invest in it, they're gonna have the artwork is gonna come to them in one of two ways. Way number one is they're gonna download a zip file that has all the Adobe Illustrator AI files, CDR files, all the clip art, all the templates and all the fonts. Fonts are very important because in order to actively edit the, the text and the, the design templates, we have to have that font installed on your system. CorelDRAW is a little different because fonts can be embedded in the actual document. So if you didn't have the font installed, you could still edit the file. But for an Illustrator user, they have to have the font installed. So we provide all the, the, the fonts. So that's the traditional way of doing it. You download a zip file, you have the files, you go to your program, you, you import or open the file and you edit it. For somebody that's a smart designer user, our, our famous add-on software for Corel, they would do it a little bit differently. What we would do is we would enable it in your content feed. And so the product and the graphics would be enabled in your content feed. You'd get a message inside of the smart designer software, which runs inside of CorelDRAW. And it would say, hey man, um, you, congratulations, you're a graphics builder graduation edition owner. Would you like to download me? And you would click on the little function there, hit download, and it will download and install the artwork. So once so you purchase it, it, you're saying it's going to show up in your subscription. Correct. And so when you get a new computer, um, it's just sitting there waiting for you. And so it's safely backed up in the cloud, but also you can download it to your local computer. And what, what we typically find is clients like that idea of having it both places. And unfortunately, I've talked to several clients in the last week that their backup habits weren't so good. And one had a computer blow up and the other one got a ransomware attack, which was horrible. And they had lost access to all of their art. And so having a backup in the cloud to me is a really, really smart thing to do. And, and uh, it is somewhat shocking to me, the people's backup habits, <laughs> it's just shocking. Now, that, that doesn't back up your changed files, does it? No, nope, but we have a backup and restore utility that will do that. But I'll show you what we do with your changed files in a second, because we'll do a, a typical workflow. So if we have this, this file, and also we push new artwork. If you're a member of our Graphics Plus program, we push, push new artwork out to you every month. So there, people are getting that artwork um, you know, pushed out to them. They're getting a little notice to say, hey, there's new artwork available and you download it. And we'll get into what we call graphics flow, our new technology in a second. But this is, this is how you would get that artwork. And once it was installed, it is going to show up in something we call the graphics browser. And the graphics browser is kind of an all encompassing tool for searching for artwork, 
for browsing through clip art through, you can, here's all my zoom backgrounds. So you can see all the funny things I've been doing with zoom backgrounds. Um, so you can utilize this to go through any of your own artwork as well as our artwork and our artworks all, you know, it's all searchable. So, you know, if I wanted to find a mortar board, um, I would probably get mortgage in there too. Um, I would just do a search for it. So this is happening locally on my computer. So if I needed a new mortar board, I could just go over here and just drag and drop that into Corel if I wanted to. Um, but the templates are all installed. And so if I was gonna localize a template, I would just go to the templates tab right here. I could go and do a search for it if I wanted to, cause you've got your search, but I'm, I wanna go to a specific folder where that artwork is located. So I'm gonna go to graphics builder I'm gonna to go to graduation edition and then here's all the templates. So let's go in and pull a template up and we're gonna, I'm gonna do the t-shirt design first. And then once we do the t-shirt design, we'll do a little, we'll do a garden flag. It'll be kind of fun. So let's see here. Let's do kind of dig this guy right here. Yeah, that's real cool. So here's how we're gonna initiate the, the editing. I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on that. And the template's gonna open. We can set up our page size, however we wanna do with it. And then we're going to localize it. So the way we're going to localize it is we're going to go over here and this is the smart designer add-on software. We're going to say edit text. So you're, unless you have smart designer going, you're not going to have these features. And so these are features we've added to Corel. So I'm just going to go over here where it says 20 XX. I'm going to change that to 2021. And then where it says Jefferson high school, we're going to change that to Lincoln high school. And we're gonna spell it correctly. That'd be funny if it wasn't spelled right. So we're not taking anything away from Corel. I can still go over here and you know, make that bigger or smaller, but we're localizing it. Um, I like that mortar board, um, but if I wanted to change it, I could go down here and say change art and we could just select it. And I could do that search again and just go over here and type in mortar and find a new one and, and swap it out. So it's just up to me. So we, we make the, the ability to localize these templates. We, we make that quite easy for you guys. Um, there, that's how we do it. I like the other one better. So I'm gonna hit control Z and go back to it. So we have our base design. There's a couple of things that have to occur here. Number one, um, we have to decide, um, you know, are we going to, you know, what are we going to print this on? If we print this on white, that's fine because the white, any light substrate we print this on with our driver, it's going to ignore the white. The shirt color is going to show through. David, can you explain kind of how that works with, with this curl draw file and sublimation? Say it again. So if we're, if we have white in the design and we're printing this onto um, a white shirt or okay. an ash colored shirt, what's going to sure. happen? So, so white in this case is the absence of color so you you would see the underlying color of the substrate um, so uh, traditionally you know you could have a transparent background um, w with absolutely nothing you know coming across out of the file but in this case white just simply means the absence of color so if you're sublimating to an orange shirt you're going to see orange in the white areas in right. the other areas, what you'll see is a is a blended color as orange uh, blends with whatever is the color that is being sublimated into it, and that's why typically you want to transfer a uh, color chart to a, a shirt so you'll know what the colors are going to look like before you choose them. Correct. And what I'll do is, is David and I have kind of teamed up on this. I'll show you kind of what that would look like built into the smart designer technology and courtesy of Condi systems. Um, what we did is we, we added the Condi, we have our own color charts, but we added a color chart. That's the Pantone go chart. And if I click on that Pantone go is kind of the no pun intended go to palette for sublimation. It's a Pantone palette. It's composed of a very wide range of RGB colors. They're very bright. They print great it's a much wider quote gamut of colors than say a CMYK chart or even the, the, the standard Pantone solid coated. So here's the kind of the traditional solid coated palette, which is a good palette, but it's not this big, giant, juicy, robust pant palette like you got with Go. So if you printed this, this chart onto, let's say a vaporware t-shirt 
and you might, you know, gang up all, you know, maybe do three or four pages per shirt front and back. You could probably do the whole thing. And you wanted to hit a specific color. If you go to the chart and you said, hey, listen, the color I want to hit is this one right here, this Pantone 20 hyphen one test seven. That's the color I want to hit. As long as I recolor the graphic to that same color, guess what? It's going to print perfectly. It, the, the chart doesn't lie. If you pick the color from the printed chart, you know the known color, how that color is going to print from Corel. And all you got to do is color to that color. As long as you do that, you'll hit the colors perfectly. And where that becomes a little, little trickier is if the customer is specifying a color, say from Pantone, the, the Pantone color chart, you know, from the little color swatches that you get might not perfectly match what you see in screen. And in fact, it likely won't. And so, you know, that's where it gets a little tricky. And um, David, I don't think uh, Pantone provides a printed chart for Go, do they? They don't. So, so let's clarify just for the folks, because uh, you said a lot there. So if you're going to play with the traditional Pantone solid coated colors, you need to buy a Pantone book. Uh, that's at an art supply place. They're relatively expensive, but you got to buy one. And yep. then you find the color in the book that your client is specifying. And then you hold that color up against the sublimated color chart on the substrate that you're going to decorate. Um, and then you find the color that matches, simply reopen the chart on your computer and paint with that color. So if you look at that one, that is after what we're looking for. That's a newer version of it. It has more colors. Notice the 294 new colors. Yep. Um, and uh, that's what you want. We really don't need the uncoated, but they sort of come together. So um, I updated my color chart recently, and it had the coolest new toy in the back. I don't know when they added it because I haven't updated my chart in, say, 10 years. But it has a, a, a lighting panel where yeah, you I saw can that. determine if your lighting is appropriate to view the chart. Yep. Yeah, and they have they have all Pantone's got all this. I call Pantone the color mafia. They uh, were smart enough to trademark the names of these colors, and all they are is RGB formulas. But they were smart enough to actually take an RGB formula and give it a name, and then everybody well, uses their names. Greg, Greg, sort of not true. Interestingly okay. enough, these colors are derived from solid colors. They started as buckets of ink. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. That's true. And that's why Pantone had so much trouble bringing it into the computer revolution because mm. there's really no legitimate RGB values. Ah, that's, um, that's a good point. And that's that's why people have so much trouble with, with um, matching Pantone colors because they're not, and that's why they came out with the go go chart. Is the go chart is is uh, process colors based on an LAB standard. So it's it's not RGB or CMYK. It's LAB. And it's designed for digital. It's and designed that... for digital. But I don't believe Go was successful in the grand scheme of things. But of all the color charts that are for process, I like it the best along with the red chart that your software also embeds. Yep, yeah, the red chart's great too. So um, what I'm gonna do is localize the colors real quick and I'll show you how we do this kind of smart designer style. You, you know, obviously, you know, you, you know, you can go in and you know, manually change colors, but the way we do it smart designer style is I would say, I would go down here to this blue and we'd go to the, the modify colors feature and I would say swap and then we'd pick um, whatever that new color is. We'll go for it. We'll drop some orange in there. We could drop orange in there. We could drop any color we want. And at, at that point, it's just going to, you know, recolor the design. Now, one of the things that, you know, you have to be kind of tuned into when you're, when you're doing this is, you know, the colors on the screen are not going to oftentimes look like the same as the colors that you know it's going to print so don't be fooled by that so you might be looking at your screen and you're like man that just doesn't look right at all and then you go to print and you're like oh it looks fine this is well it's your screen um what's important is the chart the, the screen isn't what's important what's important is the chart as long as you color those colors to the chart you're fine so what what i would do on this is you know maybe i want to create a little proof for the customer and so what I would do is I'd create a little virtual sample and I'll do that real quick and then we'll save this. So 
one of the things that's a smart idea is to save all of the art assets for that project in one centralized location. So I'm going to save the first art asset is the t-shirt design. And I'm going to, I'm going to save that. And we're going to call this Lincoln seniors. Okay. And So we're going to save the original, you know, CDR version of that file here. So we're going to call this Lincoln Seniors. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save a PNG file of this. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to export a PNG file. This is what I would use for web. So if I was going to post this into Facebook or Instagram or any kind of a web enabled tool, I would save this as a, a PNG file. And I'm just going to choose PNG as my export function. And when I click on PNG, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to have a transparent background. I could knock the background out if I wanted to, but for this design, it's, it's actually got white in it. Um, well, we could, you know, I guess it doesn't really matter. We could have a transparent background. doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to do at full 300 DPI, but I don't really need it any bigger than six inches in one dimension is plenty of, of size and resolution. So we're going to, we're going to click on that. Okay. And then we're going to mock it up. We're going to put it on a shirt. So what I would do in, in this case, I would go over to virtual samples and I would click on my virtual samples feature in smart designer. I'm going to go to my Condi folder. Yeah, we might make a mug out of this too, Dave. That wouldn't be bad. We could put a mug, make a mug out of this. And we could go over here and say, hey, we want to put it on this vaporware t-shirt. We could just click on this, it goes on the vaporware t-shirt and you, you have your virtual sample. I think in terms of doing t-shirts, I mean, you can just use a generic t-shirt blank. You don't necessarily have to use a specific shirt. Most people know what a, you know, a white t-shirt looks like. Um, so, and you can, you know, obviously do it on colored shirts and things of that nature. Now, here's the thing. How are we gonna get this in front of the customer? That's always the, that's always the, the challenge is how do we get the design in front of the customer? And there's a variety of ways that people do this. Um, one of the most common ways that folks do this is by attaching a PNG or a PDF file to an email. So why is that generally, in my opinion, a bad idea? The reason I believe that is a bad idea is if you're um, Condi Systems and I send you a PNG file or a PDF file, you know what happens? It doesn't get delivered because their, their emailing system is very strict and won't accept PDF files because Dave knows that um, PDFs are notorious for, um, you can take a, a PDF file can take a, uh, uh, you know, transport, be used to transport malware or virus. So, so the, you, you won't know that that file is not delivered. You just won't know, it just doesn't get delivered. So it either ends up in their spam folder or their, their email system, say if it was AOL or Yahoo, forget it. It's not even going to be delivered. So going that route to me is a, is a pretty, you know, is a pretty bad route. Um, if you had like a Google Drive or something and you wanted to post a link to that, that's fine. Um, that's not a bad way to do it. Let's go ahead and save this file and we'll call this the, the mock-up design and we'll call this t-shirt. Okay. So that's another way of doing it, but I'm going to show you a better way of doing it and a way that is very professional in a way that's very interactive. And we don't need this to be transparent. So it's going to be on a white background. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the new graphics flow technology, which is now the name of our company. And I'm going to log into my graphics flow account. And when I logged into my graphics flow account, you'll see it says my art. I'm going to create a folder. And under that folder, I'm going to call this Lincoln Seniors. Okay. And we're going to create that folder. And then I'm going to go to that Lincoln Seniors folder. And I'm going to upload all my art assets. So I'm just going to go to upload. I'm going to go to my desktop where I got all these art assets stored. And I'm just going to select them all and I'm going to hit, did I get them all in there? Let's get them all going. So we're going to select them all. I'm going to upload them. So if you've ever used like Dropbox or any of these other type programs, you'll notice with those programs, you can't preview a CorelDRAW file. 
you can't preview an AI file, a PSD file, PDF. You can preview JPEGs and PNGs all day long, any kind of internet format. But when I uploaded this to Graphics Flow, hey, here's your CDR file. And not only am I getting the preview, but I can apply all the production data to that too. So I'm gonna assign this to be a sublimation print. And ultimately this is gonna print out at 10.5 wide. And if I wanna add any color data or any like descriptions there. So this, if I wanna download it in the future, I can just download the original CDR, the fonts embedded in it. So we've got that there. Here's the file for the proofing file. So if we wanna go and um, send this off to the customer to have them sign, sign off on it, that's sitting there. Here is the, the CDR from the product blank and then here is the CDR or the PNG version of that. So what would, I, what would I do with this? Here's what I would do. I'd create an art approval. And so I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna say new approval. And this approval is gonna be called Lincoln Seniors. And I can put a little description is says, um, here are several concepts, several concepts. Please comment and we will make adjustments for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over and just add those files. So I'll go over here and go to my art and I'll go to my Lincoln folder and I'm gonna pull up the, this one right here and this one right here and we're gonna add it to our approval. And if I want to, I can go and change the background color in this. So if I wanted to change the background color, even though we're in the cloud, I could go over here and if we wanted to put an obnoxious orange background on there, which I don't think we would, but if we wanted to, um, we can do that. I'm doing that right in the, in the application itself. You guys see what we're doing? And so we can put a background color in there. I can add a watermark to that. So if I wanted to put a watermark in there, we could do all of that. If I didn't want to have a background color, I could just say none, and then we could just remove it. If I didn't want to have a watermark, I could say none, and we can remove it. So what I would do is I would add my customer to this approval. And what might be fun for this approval is maybe add some other senior designs in there just for, for grins. And let's go add some senior designs. And the thing is, I have access to the entire Digital Art Solutions content library. Um, the only thing that's not in here is our graphics builder series. So like the actual graphics builder graduation edition and all the artwork from graphics builder is not in the collection. What you're seeing here right here, this is the new artwork that we just uploaded this week. So every single month we have new graphics that get uploaded into the system. And so at the very top of the list is the most recent but let's go and type in the word senior and maybe we'll add a few more designs in there. So let's add this one. We'll do this one. That's cool. Um, let's see. That one's real cool. Let's see here. We could put this guy in there and maybe kind of an eighties theme here. And let's actually, I like this one better. And we just added these two. So these are now in my approval. And so not only do we have the design that the customer um, that I mocked up specifically with Lincoln, we also have other designs they can choose from and they can go comment. And so if I add, I'll add myself to this. And I'm just gonna add myself, I'm gonna add myself as an approver. And I just send an invitation. I'm gonna go over to my email and I'll sign into my personal email account. And whammo, waiting for me is gonna be that approval. And here it is. And guess what the customer's looking at? The customer is looking at this. They're looking at the art approval. And they're not seeing a little thumbnail. If they wanna see the whole thing, they're seeing, they can look at the whole thing full screen. That's why adding those watermarks isn't a bad idea. It's not as important on these because it doesn't say Lincoln High School anywhere, but it might be more important on this because it looks great full screen. And so if they come over here and we approve that design, I can go ahead and approve that design. I know that they've approved it. Or if we want, you wanna put a comment on here and say, we'll put a comment on this one. 
and say, love this design, this design. Can you mock this? Lincoln. 2021, boom. As soon as I do that, I'm immediately notified that there's a comment or if there's an approval. So if I go back to my graphics flow account now and I'm in my, my Lincoln folder, I'm actually notified in app that there's a comment. And so I will be notified that there was a comment. I can read the comment and I can reply back. So if I reply back, I just say, sure. Let me send it over. Boom, they just got emails. So it's a chat system. If there is a, a situation where they approve all of these, it's gonna be shifted over to approve. So it's not the final approval is not gonna go through until they actually go in and approve each one of these. So if I just wanted them to approve just these two, I would only send these two over. Yeah, Craig, so by this the is, way, uh... yeah. For folks that are watching, you've got a rectangular black bar on the screen. I have no idea where it's coming from. Oh, yeah, that's my screen sharing thing oh, okay. from anyway, that's actually. I just want to make sure that yeah, that's the Zoom panel people actually. Are, are going yeah, we'll crazy. move that. We'll move that over to our other screen. That way you guys don't have to see it. So this is this is how this is the modern way of getting artwork in front of customers. And the one thing, you know, it's it's fascinating to me to to talk to, to, you know, literally every week, I, I'm sure I talk to at least a hundred clients or, uh, during a week. And the one thing everyone universally is interested in right now is more customers. The, you know, I don't talk to anybody that says, Hey, I, I don't really want any more customers. People are interested in new, more customers and new business. So I always, I always like to ask the question. I was like, what is it that separates you from all the other people doing exactly the same thing you're doing. And they're like, you know, people always have a hard time answering that question. They're like, well, I have really great service. And I said, well, there, you know, there's lots of people that have great service. Um, do you have the cheapest prices in town? No, I, you know, I don't have the cheapest prices. I have a fair price. I said, so, you know, they're not picking you because of price. Um, um, you obviously have an awesome personality. That's great. It's graphics. You know, graphics are the currency of our industry. And the, the company that can get the cooler graphics in front of their customers the quickest way um, is going to win in the marketplace. That's why we created this graphics flow technology. And that's why we created the, the, the graphics builder graduation edition, because what you can do is this, this is what's, this is one of the very coolest things you can do. And you make it really I, easy on the artwork approval. I like that. Yeah. So check this out. What I did is I just drag and dropped the graphics builder graduation edition. I just drag and dropped the files into a folder in graphics flow. I just took the whole folder and drag and dropped it in there. So I got all the templates. If, if I wanted to create a showcase for my customers, just a, a web page, so my customers can see all these designs, it's simple. All I have to do is go to art approvals. I can create an instant showcase, super easy. And we can name it whatever we want. Let's see, graduation. I think I put one in here if I can't remember. Um, I could do a search if I wanted to. So this is how quick it is. You ready? Create new graduation showcase. I just created it. Go over here, go to my art, go to graphics builder. Graduation edition, pick the designs I want. We'll do this one, I'll do this one. And let's see, we'll do that guy, that guy. We're just gonna do the t-shirt graphic versions. Add them, and I just created a showcase. That's all I had to do, just instant showcase. And all I did to get that over to my customer, it's just a link right here. Just share it, it's an instant web page. I can embed that into my Facebook post. Hey, here's my graduation designs. I can embed that into an email. Hey, here's some graduation designs that we did. They can't comment because I haven't added them. So if I go this route, it's just a generic showcase. If I go this route and add them, then they can comment on it. So the ability to go and get ideas in front of clients and have them, you know, art approvals is interesting. Like the art approvals function here. Yeah, it's great for art approvals. Just like Dave, like you were saying, like having people sign off, but it's even better 
for getting ideas in front of a client. I had a customer today, I was talking on the phone to him and he does a laser engraving. And he said, well, what do you have for art for laser engraving? And so I just set up a showcase, put a few comments on here. And I just pulled some designs up that were, um, I thought were good for laser engraving. And I sent him the link. I haven't heard back from him yet, but I sent him the link. Um, cool. You know, I'd set up a thing, this gal um, that I was talking to today, I said, what's the last thing that she work, you're working on? She goes, well, we had a few designs we needed done for baseball. And then she also said, you know, we, we have football season coming up. So I created an instant showcase for her and added her, her name is Deborah, to the showcase so she could see, you know, more or less how the technology works. Um, another customer he needed, they, he was working with a university and they have this like welding contest that they do and he needed some welding themed graphics. I sent him a showcase. So why do, why do I do that? Is because the, this is how you get ideas and communicate graphics to your customers. And if you, if you look at, you know, how our work is handled in our industry and where it comes from and, and kind of the three, I call it the three kind of categories of artwork. Group one artwork is that's logos on stuff. That's customers supplying you the artwork. And you know, the, that's fine. We want that business. We're happy to do it, but they can get that from anybody and it's commoditized. So if you're a nickel short and you're dealing with some buyer and they, you know, find it, you know, a nickel cheaper online, you can spend all the time in the world trying to convince them it's not the same quality, but there's people that are just wired to, Hey, it's a nickel cheaper. So the, you know, we want that business, but it's hard to retain. And then you have the, the second group of business is, you know, if you can steer somebody into a stock design, I mean, that, that's where, you know, we just excel in terms of graphics flow because you have literally thousands, you know, you have 5,000 stock designs, 4,000, 4,598 unique stock designs in here. And no matter what you're working on, you're going to be able to find something. And, you know, that that's, we know that can cover a good portion of the customer base, but we also know there's going to be that customer that's going to need something more customized. Um, and that's the third group. You know, if you take some of these stock designs and you start mixing and matching them and adapting them, then you can get something really custom, but you don't necessarily have to, you know, jump through hoops to do that. And, you know, it's, it's my opinion that, you know, the, 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 the person that creates the better looking artwork, the fastest is who's going to win in the marketplace. And, one of the things that's really neat about graphics flows is the level of searchability it has. So, so you know, let, Craig, let me ask you. So for an AI person, um, obviously they don't have smart designer, boom, um, but they still have it. this catalog yeah. web function, right? Yeah. Mac windows doesn't matter. Yeah. This, this, this is a web app. So it runs on your phone. It runs on your, any, anywhere you get a web browser, Safari. So when you, it, when yeah. you open up an artwork piece of artwork in AI, you obviously don't have all the features to edit it that you would with Smart Designer, but it's still fully editable, right? Yeah, of course. And, you know, an Illustrator user, they know that. So they know how to edit these files. So does a CorelDRAW user, you know. So, you know, they're, you know, it's not as elegant and quick and fast as it is with Smart Designer, but it's still awesome because um, you've got all the fonts and all you got to do is download AI and ungroup it and you start editing the text. We have a little video that shows you how to do it. Um, even if you didn't have Smart Designer, you could do that in CorelDRAW. And so that was one of the things that we wanted to do is make, hey, is this a Jester or Harlequin? You're the you're the big uh, Mardi Gras guy. So what is well, that? We, we would call it a Jester around here. Okay. So it looks sort of like a sinister Jester. Yeah, it's kind of like evil looking. Um, yeah, I agree. So, so I, the, I'd be scared. Yeah. So searchability is like a big deal. So if I go over here and I go to, let's say I go to, I just had a customer that, that she asked, she goes, I just, I do. She goes, most of you do tourist and resort stuff. And I said, what do you have that's kind of like mountain themed? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Let's go into tourism and travel and just go to mountain themed. And she's like, oh, wow, you got some really good artwork in there. Yep. I know. She says, what if you want to drill it down? Well, you could, you could drill it down. I said, what do you have that's maybe athletic in there? Well, you're probably not going to see any athletic artwork. In there, but you probably are going to see some patches and maybe some crest type designs. Yeah, sure. So you can drill it down by style versus subject matter. And to me, this it's just incredibly handy to be able to find a live template like this. Click on it. If I want to edit this design, all I got to do is just say download. And if you're a smart designer user, it's even cooler because you can download it right directly into your smart designer. So I could put it into Right here, we'll just download it right here. Hit save, boom. We wanna start editing that file. 
it's on my local computer pretty easy just go down here and click on it and start editing cool so there's not you know there's really not much to it you know it's just like everything is just sitting there waiting for you to begin this this process and so the 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 key with the you know when you're working like over here in you know these designs is the flexibility of the design so let me show you just kind of showcase a little bit of the flexibility so there's my pine design there click on it and then we can have it say whatever we want so let's let's just take one of the more of like the templates and we'll make like a garden flag so dave what's the what's the dimension of a garden flag 12 by 18 a print 12 by 18 okay so here's what we're going to do so we'll we'll do a different layout we'll do something a little bit different that's got a, a photo drop in so we'll do one that has a photo drop in so i'm going to go over here to graphics builder they're installed i'm going to choose the graduation edition and i'm looking for one that has a photo drop in kind of a placeholder for photos doesn't really matter um ooh, that's cute insert photo here that would be a good one um are they vertical or horizontal doesn't matter they're they're a portrait portrait okay perfect so we're going to take that and this is going to be kind of our starting point okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my page size over here in Corel or do the same thing in Illustrator to 12 by 18. And this is in portrait. Then what I'm going to do, a little trick. If I double click on my shape tool or my rectangle tool, it's going to put a box, a rectangle, as the farthest back object in the design. And so this is actually a rectangle. Why am I going to do that? Because here's why. Because I'm going to take this background and we are going to power clip this into that rectangle. So if I go over here and I make this bigger, you guys see what I'm doing? I could stretch it out. I could take that whole thing and stretch it out, or I can ungroup it and stretch it out. And then we can clip it into this design. So I'm just gonna clip it in here. You ready? Just gonna drag it over here. I'm gonna say power clip inside. And we're going to clip the whole thing in there. And then we're just going to reformat it for this particular size. So drag it, drop it, power clip it. Then I'm going to edit it. I'm going to say, okay, let's edit that power clip. So let's make that background bigger. Let's put that up here. Okay, let's take this guy over here and we'll put that up over here. Let's take this guy and this guy and let's stretch that down to the bottom of the page. Okay, we'll stretch that down there too. You guys see what I'm doing? I'm just going in here and tweaking. Yeah, typically we'd, in real life, we'd start off with like 13 by 21 is our paper size. Then we'd have our template, which would be 12 by 18, and then we'd add a bleed to that. So Dave, do you want to exp explain what a bleed is? Well, it's just making your design a little bit bigger than the substrate so that we can sublimate right to the edge. So we're going to move that down there. I'm going to move that up there. And then I'm going to make the photo part. We don't need that. And then we're going to make the photo part a little bit bigger. And then we're just going to say finish. And we got our little sign. Cool. And this is where the photo is going to go right in here. So this is my little block where the photo goes. So to bring the photo in, easiest thing to do, if you, I'll show you both ways of doing it. In Smart Designer way, it's a little bit different. So the Smart Designer way, what we would do, you'd go to the, the location where the photo is and you would click on this object and then you would say power clip and it's just gonna power clip it in there. That's kind of the Smart Designer way. Nice. I'll show you the kind of the traditional way of doing it. I'm just going to extract this. The other way you can do it, if you're just a standard Corel user or you're an Illustrator user you're using masks, is if you, you have a power clip frame here, um, you can just drag the file over the power clip flank, uh, frame and it'll lock it in. Or if you don't have a power clip frame, I'm going to remove the power clip frame here. So we're going to remove that. Whoops. Frame. 
remove frame. So this is just a rectangle now. If, if it's just a rectangle, then just drag the photo over here. I'm going to purposely do it off center. Release it with your right mouse button and then power clip inside. So let's do that one more time. I'm holding it down. I've selected it. I'm going to right click with my right, right mouse button. I've got my right mouse button held down. I'm going to drag it over here and then I'm going to release my right mouse button. I'm going to be prompted to power clip it. From here, then what I can do is I can say, edit power clip. I get the little edit thing and then I can reposition it, make it bigger, smaller. Let's say we want to get most, you know, have her be a lot bigger in here. You could do that. And then when you're done, you just have a little finish button there. That's it. So That's there's our little, cool. I mean, there's our little, there's our garden flag it, right does there. Does Illustrator have the equivalent of power clip? No, Illustrator uses masks and masking, which is quite a bit more complex. Um, you know, somebody that's if seasoned and, you know, experienced Illustrator user knows how to do this using the masking function in Illustrator, but it's, it's not like, an, it's not like this super easy thing like it is in Corel with power clipping. Power clipping is one of the truly great Corel features. Oh, it's, it's, it's just breathtakingly exciting. It's just a great clip. feature. Yeah. So, and anything in this design can be modified. So if I say edit power clip, you know, I can open the power clip up. And if I want to move that down, I could do that, make it bigger. Um, let's say I want to move this white line up here. So it's touching. Um, and you know, we can do any of that. I mean, that's, that's the flexibility yeah, from here. We need you to just have print you on it. again, just to, um, talk about the subject of removing backgrounds. Um, that's always a great topic. And, yeah, I guess we could do a class just on that. Um, this is a, a live template, you know, so, it, you know, if I wanted to go in on this template and, you know, let's say I extract the whole thing from the design, so it's extracted, it's still live. So I can go over here and, you know, go to my tutorial or my text function and say, hey, listen, let's make that say 2021 and let's change it to, you know, Lincoln. I think we were doing Lincoln, right? And let's, you know, localize the colors. Got to know how to spell. That's the only thing. There you go. And you know, when you're when you're done, you can you always have that ability to go in and do the power clipping. And I just yeah. love that feature. I think it, it's just such a handy feature. Oh, it is. Well, Craig, I think we are running out of time. Yep. So that's it. That's the whole. That's the whole shebangy right there. Is it's a digital kit, and whether you're using Illustrator or Corel Draw, um, I give you guys kind of a sneak peek on the graphics flow. So I'm going to make a big announcement. Can you handle that, David? Go ahead, Craig. Yes. Here's the big announcement. I just got approval to do this. If you are a Condi Systems client, you are going to have a promo code, and your promo code is Condi. That's it. Nothing, nothing beyond that. Just Condi. And you go to graphicsflow.com. You're going to see a sign up right here. And you're going to click on Get Started. And you are going to put in your email, your first name, your last name, and pick a password. It's got to be 10 digits, the name of your company. And you're going to click on sign up. You're going to put a promo code in that's Condi. Your price for the first month is going to be 0.0, .0 free. You have to put your credit card in because you're going to be billed $99 a month if you stay in the graphics flow. You will have access to you know, 5,000 design templates and over 10, actually almost 25,000 vector clip art images for digital art solutions. You will be getting new artwork every month. You will be getting access to one of the, I think one of the best training programs in the industry, but your first month is on Condi Systems. And so you go in and you go to the next page, put your credit card in, put in the Condi promo code. Your charge for the first month is zero. You are not obligated in any way. If you want to try, try it out for a month and you don't want to move forward, just cancel it. But your first month is on is on Condi Systems. So for the ninety nine dollars, you you get everything. Yeah. So here's what you get for for ninety nine dollars a month. This is what you get: is you get access to the entire digital art solutions. The only thing that's not included in this is the graphics builder collections, which are supplementary. So you get the entire giant library of design templates from Digital Art Solutions. You get 100 downloads a month, and you get 25 gigabytes of storage space, which is a lot. 100 downloads a month is a lot of downloads. You get the entire font set from Digital Art Solutions. You can download that as a single set. We we sell these fonts for we sell these fonts for $30 a piece if you buy them one off at a time, just for signing up. 
you get all 375 of those downloaded and installed in your system just for signing up. I take that's it, it. That, that those that's for our that's for life, so to speak. In other words, no, nope. no, it's 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 no, it's not for life. So you're only licensed to utilize the artwork and the content while you are active with your membership. Ah. So yeah, there, it, there's obviously there's no way for us to, to track that, but you know the licensing is you're only licensed to use that content while your membership is active. Anything okay. you've anything you've created, the using the system, you're free. Even if you you cancel your membership, anything that you've created, you're free to continue reprinting. Okay, but you so can't once create you new put the do put the font in a document. That's it. Right. Yeah, that's correct. And you can print it as many times as you want. Um, so the whole giant clip art library from Digital Art Solutions um, and very ultra searchable. New now, artwork every single month. The builder is, those are add-on? Those, those are, those are add-ons. So they're independent of, of graphics flow. So you could, you could call those supplements if that makes sense. So they're supplementary. Um, and then and you can those, have up to five. Are those purchased or monthly per, license? Purchased. Purchased. At least at this point, they're purchased. Okay. The You can have up to five team members in your Graphics Flow account. So you can have five team members, and those team members can have, you know, their Mac, their Windows computer, their Android tablet, their, you know, iOS, doesn't matter. It's five emails, five users. When you go and set up your team settings, you can upload your logo. You can set up how you want your watermarks to look any kind of policies or disclaimers. This is a good one. You'll appreciate this, David. We strive to display as accurately as possible the colors or products shown on this website due to the inconsistency, blah, blah, blah. It tells you, hey, the colors on the screen are not gonna be the same as what prints. And so the customer has to click through that. And then you have 25 gigs of storage space. And so, I mean, it's, it's crazy, the stuff that I've uploaded here. So the Graphics Flow is the primary product for what was formerly called Digital Art Solutions, which is now called Graphics Flow. This is our primary product. And Condi folks can sign up, get the first month on, on the house. And if you stay with it, it's 99 bucks a month. There's no contract. You cancel any time you want. That's it. So how much, how much is the uh, graduation? The all? graduation product, if you go to the Digital Art Solutions website and you click on it, It's part of Graphics Builder. So if you want to take a, a closer look at it, it's, it's in our Graphics Builder series. There's a Buy Now button. So if you click on Buy Now, right there, it's going to be $299. But I have a special link that I put in the chat, David. Now you guys could post that on Facebook if you'd like. Condi folks can do that for $199. Okay. And so I have a, a special link in our e-commerce. And for those of you that are on Facebook Live, um, David can put that in, and I'll put that in the chat. Yeah. Um, By the way, I like your military collection. Yeah, the military collection turned out great. Everybody's really pretty impressed with that. So I already have that in the chat, David, but I put okay. the link to that. Um, and we have a link for the military collection too. Um, so we did the two new, there's actually two of those now. There's the two military collections, but what, what I always recommend doing, you know, if you're interested in finding out anything at digital art, we don't bite. So if you're interested in finding out anything about digital art solutions, the best thing to do is just go on the website, click on one of the forms. When we reach out to you, um, we're going to, you know, identify that you're with Condi systems. You make sure that, you know, you get all your discounts and such. There's forms all over here. You can just go over here and you can click on, Hey, I'm interested in graphics builder. And you can click on the, the little form to submit a, a lead in here, you know, more information. Um, we're, we don't bite. So that's how we do. I don't know. Is there a form on that one? I thought there was a form on that one. I know there's a form on the graphics flow. All right, Craig, I'm going to go that. back to the cameras here if you want to turn. All right, so we're good. Off. We're done. So request a demo. Just click on request a demo on the graphics flow page. And that's a good way to get initiated with us. So that's it. So promo code Condi, C O N D E camera back on if you can all righty closing comment so so my my first comment or our question for you as we close this session thank you very much for the time you spent with us is um um i'm still seeing your um your share oh I'm a, let me stop my sharing yeah so you know let me ask you a question as we sit here you know it's may 2021 
is is the need for artwork going to go away in the future like a lot of things is is the need for artwork like going to go away like CDs nope. or is it just going to keep coming at us Here's the thing artwork is trans it's 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 transient right styles change colors change what's popular in fonts change and like I said before artwork is the currency of our industry and so if if you can't compete with graphics in the industry people are going to buy from other folks you know, there's, you know, there are people that are just plain, you know, this, David, they're cheap. They're not using anything unless they can steal it off the internet. And, you know, that's not generally a good idea because until you get the letter from Getty images or one of these other outfits, that's, that's not a fun thing to get. You know, when you invest in artwork, you know, that you have the, the, the license and the copyright to use it. You don't have to worry about that. But, you know, where we've made, you know, where we've made, you know, been successful quite simply is by helping you to differentiate yourself from the competition. If everybody's doing the same thing and in the company that has the better artwork wins in the marketplace and we, and people want artwork that looks like the retail trends. It wasn't by accident that we hired this very expensive domestic design team to do the artwork for graphics. So it was very intentional because we wanted to give you guys graphics that set you apart from what everyone else is doing. So well, uh, yeah, I, I don't see it this way. Artwork is what gets you in the door. And right. artwork is what keeps those reorders coming. Yeah. And um, if you want to sell into a marketplace, if you want to say sell into the Christian marketplace and churches, if you don't have artwork for that, you can't even sell to those folks. So you have to have artwork and we're working on another um, uh, faith-based product. We're real excited about that. That was a real good one last year. The military product was been very successful. So you'll always see us continue to innovate and graphics flow is a way that it's an affordable way for people to tap into the power of graphics and the power of personalization and the power of um, showcasing, you know, artwork to their clients you for a very low the price. Churches are are after innovative ways to maintain that communication with their yes, members. Yes, they are. Um, they always need those funds coming in. Um, all, fundraising is, of course, one of the, my favorite markets and. And that's something that your collection does good good job. Well, All right. uh, Craig, I'm sure we got questions. I'm, I'm sure our team is going to be posting some answers. But I want to thank you for being with us today. And again, um, everybody thank Craig for the excellent job he does in, in serving our community. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, David and Sprite. Thanks, Very much appreciated. You take All right. care. Thank All right. You. Take care. Bye-bye.